Hello everybody and welcome to Daily Entomologist and in this video uh, we're going to take a closer look at uh, dragonflies and damselflies. Alright, so I've had a few requests actually about uh, focusing on some different groups of insects. Um, so I will eventually be getting to those requests. Um, it just might not be right away. But um, this one's going to be pr uh, um, I'd be able to do relatively easy and quickly. And so uh, Silver Wings uh, said uh, recommended a uh, video on uh, my dragonflies and damselflies. So, we're just going to look through my collection real quick of those, get a closer look at some species. Um, and then we're actually going to go out on the little park here in my neighborhood and uh, see what we can find out there. Um, so, make it easy here. This you saw in the last, in uh, my full collection video. So, uh, dragonflies and damselflies are the order Odonata. Um, and they're actually broken down into two suborders. Dragonflies, Anisoptera, and damselflies, Zygoptera. Um, so we're going to go through the, just a couple of the dragonfly families real quick. Uh, a couple of the most com two of the most common families you'll probably see are uh, Libellulidae, Libellulidae, uh, there's a lot of L's in it, and uh, Ishnidae, which is the darners, and uh, Libellulidae is the skimmers. God, I try saying that ten times fast, that's ridiculous. Anyway, so, uh, and here in this uh, particular box here, I only have uh, one species of Darner, which is probably the most common one you would see. And then here it is. The, um, oh, shoot. I'll deal with that when I'm done. I accidentally broke the tail off. Of course I did. I'm just gonna look at it right here. So here's a, a um, <clears throat> excuse me, a green darner. Large, pretty common species. Um, that's the only species of darner I have up in this uh, box here. Um, so. Uh, the other really common family that people see are the skimmers, which has quite a few different uh, species in it. That includes uh, these uh, 12 spotted skimmers right here. Um, these uh, corporals right there, chalk fronted corporals. Um, here we go. Uh, the Widow Skimmer right there. And uh, the Common White Tail Skimmer. Like those ones right there. As well as these little tiny Eastern Amber Wings. Um, so it's pretty cool. About a lot of... Uh, uh, skimmers, particularly, um, there's a central dimorphism between males and females. Um, a fantastic species to demonstrate is the eastern amber wing. So if you look here, we have that specimen with all amber-colored wings right there. And we have these specimens with more clear and blotchy colored wings. Um, so. 
that tells me that that one's a male and these ones are females. And that's a, a really quick way to differentiate between, the, uh, determine which uh, sex the uh, uh, individual is. Um, so, you, uh, same thing is also on other larger species. Um, so, here, uh, these two specimens are both male. You can see the kind of a prunos abdomen, but they have the black, white, black, white, black pattern on the wings. Um, kind of difficult to, to, to see here, but I hope you can kind of make out that white on the wings right there. So then if you look at this specimen, uh, it's lacking the prunos on the abdomen, and it's lacking the white on the wings. So that tells me the, the males have the white and the prunose abdomen, and the females lack the white and the prunose abdomen. Now what prunose means in dragonflies is basically this uh, white coloration on the abdomen there. Um, the widow skimmers, uh, looks like I just have females in here of the widow skimmers. But widow skimmer females lack uh, the white coloration on the wings well, while males have the white and black on the wings. Um, I have a couple other uh, families in here as well. I have a Cordulidae, which are the emeralds. Um, so, yeah, I got like a emerald right there. Uh, this specimen here and here are emeralds. Um, many of those species can be kind of difficult to identify, but they're a neat, uh, neat family. We have a gomphidae, which are the club tails. Um, so, like uh, that specimen right here, you can you can see the club tail of where they get their name there on that specimen. So we have that. Um, I have uh, this uh, club tail up here in the corner. We have this monstrous one right here. This is called a Dragon Hunter. Um, caught that one on the Nemecogon River in Wisconsin, back home. Really, really impressive species that one is. And another uh, family I have here is a Macromyidae, which are the uh, cruisers. I got these ones in uh, Arkansas. These are large, quite beautiful dragonflies as well. So I got that cruiser there. I got a cruiser right there as well. Um, that's kind of a quick run through of those. Um, well, they have the damselflies here. And uh, the damselflies here represent three different families. The most common one uh, is the um, Kona Gryonidae, the uh, narrowing damselflies. So are these uh, this regular small looking uh, specimens. And we have a Caloptera gidi. Oh, that's a weird one. That's that that comes off the tongue weird. Those are the broad winged damsels, so that includes like these uh, jewel wings here. We have a beautiful ebony jewel wing right there. Down here we have uh, some nice river jewel wings. Oh, there's the other one right there. Uh, if I, these are the genus Calipteryx, if I remember correctly. Um, and the other family is Lestidae, which are the uh, spread wings. 
which are these large uh, damselflies right here. And it's more obvious when they're uh, resting. There's actually been a specimen up in, the, in my yard here. Hopefully it's still flying around or fly, or we can find uh, some today uh, in, the, in the park here in the neighborhood. But uh, yeah, that's just a pretty quick general run through. Now if you remember me saying um, these are all the stuff or all the specimens I pinned uh, uh, many years ago. So this is not how I uh, do a dragonflies anymore. I'm going to set that aside. So this is how I keep my dragonflies. Um, so I keep them on uh, envelopes here. So you have a pale snake tail right here. I put a date on the front and on the back of the card. And that's how I uh, keep specimens now. It saves a lot of space in my collection. I don't need to spread out the wings. Just keep them like this. Um, and basically all my supplies from here I get from Walmart some index cards, uh, 3x5 index cards, and I get these uh, plastic babies and all that type of stuff. Um, so, like, uh, here is a uh, green darner right here. With the info on the back. And the specimen right there. Now a lot of these aren't identified or really sorted much yet. Um, here's another species of darner right here. Blue eyed darner, and that's pretty common around here. Beautiful species. Now silver wings, if I remember in your uh, comment, you said you have three darner species so far. Um, I only have two, so you have me there. I just have these two species uh, so far. Um, I have a Dromal Ground Fist Spinosis, a Black Shouldered Spiny Leg. And got the info on the back here. These are, this is a type of a club tail. I think. Yeah. But I have that. Oh, here's a, a species of darner. I mean, uh, not darner. Um, skimmer. And uh, see, um, I do it with uh, damselflies as well. Sorry, that got a little dark there. So there's an orgy of Vivida, a Vivid Dancer. And, uh, yeah. So I have a small but uh, growing uh, Dragonfly and Damselfly collection. Uh, most of these ones in here, um, I need to go through and identify still. Um, but it's kind of general like that. Oh, it looks like there's still stuff in here I need to ID as well. There's a bandwing meadowhawk. We'll see some of those out in the field later in the video. There's a little everywhere right now. So we got that. Um, we're going to go through um, 
how I preserve them real quick. Um, I use acetone. Um, when you catch a dragonfly or damselfly, put in a envelope, a paper triangle, glassing envelope, or whatever you have. And I like to keep it in there for a little while to make sure they empty their digestive tract. And then when they do, I pull them out of the envelope and I put them in a, uh, a, t a tubware container and let them give and give them an acetone bath. Um, you can do either do it overnight or 12 to 24 hours um, as what works. Um, I just did this Walmart or wherever, wherever you can find a bottle of uh, 100% pure acetone. And what this does is this helps preserve the uh, colors in the adult specimens. So you can see they still have pretty decent colors. Um, and that is because of the acetone here. Um, so you let them soak for 12 to 24 hours. Um, and then take them out, let them dry for a couple hours, and then you put them in the envelope and all that type of stuff. Um, I believe I did a video on preserving dragonflies and damselflies, so I actually go through the actual steps. Um, I think I did a video like that. Anyway. So basically the last part of this video here, we're going to be uh, out in the field and seeing what species we can find. Alright, so we are now outside at the park and already seeing lots of dragonflies. Of course, it's probably not going to focus on it right there. Yeah, I don't know. I might have to just catch a lot of them to show you. But. There we go, I got a metal hawk in there. I'm gonna go over here and I'll take a closer look at it here. So meadowhawks are in the genus Impetrum, and uh, for the most part, many of most many of the species are quite frankly a pain in the ass to ID. Uh, females of most species look virtually identical, so the best way to get an ID for meadowhawks is to look at males. But luckily, there are a couple species that are pretty distinctive and relatively easy to ID. And uh, the bandweed meadowhawk here is one of them. The, uh, um, some other specimens of other species do have a very little amber color to the wings at the base of the wings. But uh, uh, this species has like full on bands, as you can see here. Um, so this species, along with uh, White-faced meadowhawks and blue-faced meadowhawks are uh, easy to identify. Um, so this is the species that's been out for about a month now, a couple weeks at least. And uh, I mean, they're out in the hundreds, hundreds and hundreds. Um, so this is uh, 
species number one here in the park and I just found species number two actually and just landed here on the ground um, so I'm gonna let this one go and uh, see it right here down there on the pile of leaves right there we have a Argia vivida a vivid dancer Um, so that is species number two right there. And I'm going to try and get in a position where we can get a better look at it. Okay. So I don't think this one I'll have to catch. There we go. You see why it got its name. I mean, the blue coloration on this species is absolutely ridiculous. Like, it looks almost purple. It's just, it's just a really, really nice, really dark colored blue. Well, that one flew away, but we got to see it. Oh, and here's a, there was another uh, Banwing Meadowhawk, but this one's a mature male, which you can tell because of the red coloration. But it's being a jerk right now and very flighty. Oh, okay. If I don't scare it, the grasshoppers do. And it flew up in there. But anyway, uh, Go ahead, uh, keep searching, and I'll come back when I find the next species. All right, so right here we have a Lestes uh, species, which is belongs to the spread wings. And hopefully now, hopefully it'll focus on it. But as I mentioned before, please focus on it. I, that's really disappointing. I wish this can focus on what I wanted to focus on. I don't want the background, damn it. All right, so you can see how it rests right there with its wings spread open like that. That's one of the telltale signs of uh, spread wing damselflies when you're out in the field compared to uh, other uh, uh, damselflies right there. And this camera is just I mean, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get it to focus on this. But 
but you can see, get the general idea right there. Uh, so, got a uh, lusty species right there. Um, and uh, as you can see, this uh, neighborhood park here has a nice little wetland, a pond and a creek that uh, runs through. So it's generally really good for uh, dragonflies and hamsterflies. And uh, right flying right over here, it's like a species of darner. But hopefully we'll get a better look at them when we get uh, on the other side over here. Because I really, unless I can somehow catch it. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to try, I guess. I mean, it's flying right in front of me over here. It looks like a blue-eyed darner. So that specimen I showed you in the collection. But I really... Oh, oh, okay. just got in a fight with another one now this is probably really boring for you guys right now because I probably can't you probably can't see it on the camera um, so I'm just gonna move on here all right so made it to uh, the main stretch of the wetland where we're likely to see the most uh, species um, Once again, there's more uh, blue-eyed darners down here But whether I get them on camera or not is a completely different story So what I'm going to do is just uh, lock down the edge right here. And uh, see what we can find. Getting a uh, lot of uh, grasshoppers. Sure, you can see the uh, bandweed meadow hawks here flying around. We've got some darners as well. I don't have the shotgun mic for the camera yet, so there'll still probably be some wind stuff happening.
Okay, I think we got a glimpse of that darner right there that just uh, fluttered by. Anyway, that's uh, species number four. Now, I've had uh, really good luck with some, uh, been able to collect quite a few different species of dragonflies and damselflies in this park. Various skimmers, uh, a few different types of damselflies. Fortunately, I'm not really seeing what I usually see. But that's how this stuff grows. You go to a place where you've seen stuff before to show people and you don't see them. Looks like the only uh, large species flying is the blue eyed darner. Well, sorry, this part of the video is kind of boring. I don't blame you. Well, here. You see the red coloration of the male. That's actually in tandem with the female right there. That's kind of sweet. Once again, it focuses on the background and not on what I want it to do on the front end. So apparently so far that's going to be all the species we see. I mean, I don't even see any uh, fork tails or anything. Oh. I guess I spoke too soon. It's not a fork tail. Um, uh, an elogma, a species of bluet. See it right there. Now, it's not going to be in focus because apparently that's the way this camera works. See how in there? So I do apologize if, uh, this uh, dragonfly and damselfly video didn't turn out quite the way you were hoping. Well, we're really seeing a lot of meadowhawks, aren't we?
Oh, I got another uh, spread wing right there. Should have brought my camera taking pictures of some of these. Since the camera doesn't focus. I'm gonna read the manual, see if there's something I can do about that. Obviously, if I don't uh, see anything more, I guess this is not much more I can do if there's nothing else here. Um, so I'm going to head back to the house and see if I can find anything in the yard real quick. And hopefully... Give us something uh, else to look at. Well, I'm back in my yard. Um, just more metal hawks and some damselflies here. Yeah, specimen there. Specimen right there. Now that kind of looks like RJ Apicalis. That might be another species. Because we, I have those around here as well. But, uh, it's kind of bummed by the low uh, species count looking for them. Sorry about the lack of stuff there. Um, if I would have done this video like a month, month and a half ago, uh, ago uh, we would have been rolling in the species down there. I have documented pool. Easily a dozen species just in that little spot down there. I um, only found f four or five today. Um, so, unfortunate, um, and I didn't see the, uh, uh, other spread wing up here in the yard. Um, some days it's here, some days it's not. Um, so, unfortunately, not here. Um, so, silver wings, I hope you, uh, I hope this video was uh, somewhat as you were hoping. I, I'm sorry if it wasn't the, what you were hoping to see. Um, but we did look at the collection, went out, tried looking for some, did find a couple things. Although a lot of dead space as well. But that's the whole part of collecting. Uh, so. Nothing extremely exciting in this video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. Um, and if anybody else has uh, video suggestions, feel free to comment below and uh, I'll add them to the list um, to the suggestions I already have written down I'm planning on doing. So uh, I'll see you guys next time.